everyone, and welcome to Who Threw the Curve. And today we have Pablo we and Randy sporting his Philly jersey, um, straight out of Delaware, and myself, Robert, coming at you from New York City on the Lower East Side. And we're going to be talking about uh, a good, it's going to be a good topic. I mean, obviously, everybody's going to have their different favorites. But I'm going to chime into something that Joe Montana, uh, you know, made a statement on. And Joe Montana Montana feels that Dan Marino, not Brady, should be the number one on the all-time quarterback list. Um, and I believe we're both from that era, so uh, we're both familiar with Dan Marino, especially me being a Jet fan. Go for the pond <laughs> knot. Could throw the ball anywhere from any position. Pretty boy, but talk to talk, but walk to walk. Tougher than a pine knot, I think I said. Statistical just dominance. But he ain't got no hardware, brother. But he never won a chip. <laughs> no hardware. <laughs> um, I don't know. I still think I I try. I know when I sat there and I looked at research, and I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked at stats. At the end, it doesn't matter. Tom Brady, he got not only what is it seven chips, but how many other Super Bowls that he were he was in that he could got it win. done, brother. You know he, he managed, always managed to get to the Super Bowl regardless, like. Whenever you look, it was Tom Brady, no matter who he played. And the, and the greatest thing about Tom Brady was nobody made Tom Brady. Tom Brady made players. Yes. So, and you could, you could look back on all these wide receivers that Tom Brady made famous on, you know, while he was playing in New England. And then they went on to move to different teams, and they were junk. Yep. Yeah. He laid the blueprint, and it amazes me how all these – I could be an offensive coordinator, really. I could because every one of these guys has – Tom Brady has laid the blueprint on how to win and win and win and win and win and sustain winning. First yeah. of all, you're the – Tom Brady was the captain. He was the leader. He, yep. he ran that ship. He got everybody to look. Y'all want to win a championship? You're still going to be millionaires. Everybody want to win a championship? You want to come here? You're going to do things this way. This is how it's done. We may bend and bless with the rules a little bit, lower the football here and there, whatever. You know, we'll talk about that later, the flake gate. But you're going to be, be normal about your money. You're not going to be causing holdouts and causing a bunch of media frenzy around here. You're going to practice, and you're going to look practice like you're going to play. You're going to focus on you and being where you're supposed to be making your cuts where you're supposed to make them, making your blocks where you're supposed to make them, and that's it. And I'm going to make sure by I do my part and getting the ball to you like I'm supposed to get it to you, quick, boom, boom, working on his skill, keeping his body tight. The man never even eats strawberries because the acidity in the strawberries right. does something to your body. It's not good for an athlete as far as your muscles. Uh, I don't know. He I read it. He will not eat strawberries. Really? Um, a lot of electrolytes, a lot of seeds and stuff like that. But the point is, he stuck with one trainer. He takes care of his body. He's, yep. he's a student of the game 24-7. He remains humble. Yeah, he's got Giselle. <laughs> anyway, another story. Well, but him and Giselle, the man laid though. the blueprint, really, on how well, to be a successful quarterback. And I don't I don't want to not say that Dan Marino was not, like, so I did a list of my own of who I thought, and I looked at this last night, and I was like, well, let me let me write down who I think. So I have well, number one at Tom Brady. All around? Or are you talking about statistics? Well, we're talking, talking about all around. around player. We're talking about all around top 10 quarterbacks ever. So I, I'm not talking about now. I'm just talking about in general ever. Oh, so in general. Okay. My, my first pick would have been Tom Brady. I mean – this guy yeah. is awesome. He's like He's levels above. And with Tom Brady, at one point in my life, I thought, well, it was him and Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick is a genius. However, the last couple of years showed that it was Tom Brady and Bill together. So they both had to exist in order to be 
that that phenom team that they created. And In order for era. that truth to come alive. Right. Joe Montana would be my second. Uh, and only because Joe was another one. Uh, this guy threw and threw and threw. He he never stopped throwing. And, and of course, he was, you know, he won a couple of chips as well when he was with the Niners. Uh, my third would be Peyton Manning. Now, I was, I'm not a real Peyton Manning fan, but when I looked at the whole rainbow quarterbacks that was, that was there, uh, and I, and I read some of the stats and what he did, I would have to say he would be number three. And then I know a lot of you millennials and Gen X don't know who Johnny Unitas is. That would be my, that would be my number four. Um, he ran, he's the one that brought passing around, tough on the pond, not playing around. Yeah, he was he was called the comeback kid. He was never out. It he never not or not. And that's him. another thing. That's another thing with Brady. He was just like Johnny. Yeah, you can never count Brady out. Remember that Super Bowl with the Falcons? Yes, he, he should have never won that Brady. Super Bowl. He should have never won that Super Bowl. Hell but no! If you if you count them out. You gave him Tom, a window Tom to come Brady back. is the type of player you don't take chances against. No, nope. when you get a lead, you hammer down, you keep going. Then they stepped up in that game. They slipped up, let up, and then got upset. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think my number five would have been Brett Favre. Uh, he was an interesting quarterback as well. Huh? The gunslinger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he gave us good a good 20 seasons because he was a good quarterback. And it's then tough. I think number six would have been Dan Marino. I don't think he's even a good top five. Like he's good. Dan Marino was good, but all he gave you was stats. I mean, if we want to do that, we could, we could throw uh what's his name? Uh, remember the quarterback from the Cowboys? Troy Aikman. No, not Troy Aikman. The one uh, after- Roger Starbuck. No, we're talking about Danny after- White. No, the one who uh, this guy replaced. What the? Uh, Jack shit. Prescott. No, he's he's the one now. I know. The one before the cow bitches here, man. Well, if we want to just base everything on stats, then anybody. I mean, you, I could pull out a bunch of other quarterbacks that would be number one, but. It's not only about the stats. Dan Marino had a lot of good stats, but at the end of the Tony day, Romo. He, Tony Romo. Yeah, Tony. Tony Romo was an often awesome, awesome stats quarterback. You look at his stats. Yes. This his, guy could throw. He just yeah, never won. He he's pinpoint passer. Yeah. Throw people open. And but he never won. Choke artist. Fumble you know what the ball, the ball, fumble. His his stats are crazy. And then I had Steve Young, number seven, Roger Starbuck, number nine. Uh, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Otto Graham, Graham, um, number nine. And then, of course, Drew Brees, number 10. Because we can't forget Drew Brees. You don't have Ben Roethlisberger nowhere in there. No. He's Ben. What did he do? Theoretically. He won two chips, but what, what did he really do? His his keeping plays alive, shifting his well, Because in the if that's the case, if that's the case, then I can talk about Manny. Manny from the Giants. He won two chips, but he didn't do anything. I mean, theoretically, what you really did. His defense won two chips, but he won. He was the quarterback. But Ben, Ben, both times they won Super Bowls, they won games on the in route to the Super Bowl off of Ben's feet and arms and stuff. He well, he took the team on his back and. I know they won playoff games, but I think when it comes, when you look at it as a whole, he beat he Brady. He ah, uh, he beat Brady twice. But no, Eli beat you at Brady twice in the Super Bowl. No, I'm talking about in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, playoffs. Anybody can lose in the playoffs, to but get to the beat, Super Bowl. But to beat Brady in the Super Bowl, why Eli you Manning in the top ten? Eli Manning and. I don't. I don't know if you remember. One of them, they were undefeated, and Eli yes. Manning. Eli, Eli Manning. Eli took scrutiny and and just bashing his whole career, but he beat the greatest of all time 
twice, twice on the biggest stage in the world, and you don't have him in the top ten? No. Personal foul. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Roughing your co-host ears with nonsense. <laughs> Eli, but Eli is not impressive. Because if you look, if you look oh. at the, if you look at the games, look at the games. It wasn't Eli who won. It was the defense who won that it. Throw for the in nine. between three defenders, the guy caught off his head. That, huh? That, that's not something you planned. That's that was just lucky and good timing, and that was, to catch he created that, that. He stepped yeah. up, he got loose, and he kept the play alive. And is that is that in the think about it? Is that in the playbook? No. Exactly. That was the, it was he good ripped timing. on the playbook. It was, he, it was good timing, and it just fell in. It was a good play, and it happened. But it it wasn't that specific. We're talking about quarterbacks who sit there. Individual, I get it. Again. And they go, and they don't have to. They don't have to throw a hail mary and say, "Oh man, I hope you catch it." No, they're gonna beat you, and they're gonna beat you because they're that good. Eli, but that he, was like a hail mary. I'm throwing it up. Catch it, catch. It. I don't care where. I don't care if it's great to beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, brother. I don't. I don't care if the ball gets stuck in the grating of your helmet, but just catch it. That's what Eli did. In reality, it was both times the defense. Number one, it was the deep, the giant defense that got. Uh, them to the Super Bowl both times. Period. Because the first time that they beat they beat uh, uh, Brady, they got there through their beef defense. They beat all these teams that they should not have. They shouldn't even be in the Super Bowl, but they were. And then they beat the best team at that point in time, I think, ever. They went undefeated. And they had an even record. They were 8-8 eight eight when they got in the playoffs. Yeah. And they won. And it was because of the defense. And the other time they were nine and seven or something like that. I get it. But there was, I think Eli also has the most comebacks <laughs> in the two in the final two minutes of the game. I gotta look at that. Or yeah, the top you, three you, for that. Okay. Let, he has to orchestrate those drives, man. It's it's, it's like it's, Brady did. Think about this. Think about all <laughs> the quarterbacks I just mentioned, and then we'll take Eli. And we'll take Ben, right? Both of them. Look at what they do, all the quarterbacks that I mentioned did not depend on the defense. They depended on them, on their brain. Eli won games, and if you look at all his games, how many blowouts did he have? You could probably count that in one hand. Ben, how many blowouts did he have? You probably count that in one hand. Why? Because if you look, Steelers' defense was always top five when Ben was quartering. Yeah. I get it. Right? Giants, always top five. They depended on defense to keep that game score low. But, but ben, ben, on, on ben, some some of those games that they won to get them, even though the Super Bowl is the biggest stage, the games leading up to the Super Bowl, starting from the end of the regular season to the playoffs, could be some of the most exciting, gritty, hard-fought games around. And there were several of those that they won because of Ben Roethlisberger, and that was it. And another guy you don't have on there who I, I find this is just – is Kurt Warner. Oh, my uh, God. Kurt, Every, I mean, Kurt the Warner dude, had a lot, two or three good years. That's it. But they look – but those, that's how he's what in the Hall of Fame. What did Kurt Warner do with the Giants? Nothing. What did he have around him? One man in a team sport can't do it. Again, you just said it. Look, look at all the people I named. It didn't matter what they had around them. He put up the highest they could have completion me and you as a wide receiver and made us into Hall of Fame wide receivers. Me and you. But, but throwing the highest completion percentage in the history of the game, that, that I don't care how great your receivers are, you got to be able to throw the ball. And you got to do that well, in the NFL. Just imagine if I'm just throwing 10 yard passes, five yard passes, I do that 50 times, I just have the highest throwing percentage. This was the greatest show on turf. That's not what he was doing. He was downfield, remember? And, like, like, listen, this conversation, this topic has to be broken down. First of all, you got top 10 from 19, from start of football up to 70, okay? Because mm -hmm. they're different styles of quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Then you got to have from 70 up until now. And you start off with Tom Brady's clear cup greatest of all times top 10 without tom brady from now until 1970 
and it, because of this, the court, the game has evolved through evolution. See, all of our topics we talk about, they all tie in somehow. But it's ben, is, ben is maybe top thirty, and I'm talking about maybe oh, twenty one, oh, twenty two. No. I could find a, a, a bunch, a bunch of. And other I guarantee people. you, think Mark Sanchez is top fifteen, probably, huh? No, he don't even. He's not even part. He's not even top hundred. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't even be in the NFL. I think Tebow before Mark Sanchez. Oh my God, <laughs> Tebow! I've been thinking about it. He t- a numb nut like Tebow stepped in there through pure determination Good. and just willed to win because he was a winner. Well, beat the upset the Steelers. <laughs> I think I think Tebow fucked himself up. He would have been a great tight end. Oh God, he would have. He, he would have been. Started. He would have been an awesome tight end. But he, he, he would have been to be a quarterback. Jason Kelsey. Or uh, Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Um, so he just picked the wrong position, you know. Sometimes you got to listen to yourself. I mean, yeah, sometimes you got to listen to other people, not yourself. Sometimes your skill set is not what you think it is. Yep. <laughs> no problem, um, no. But if you, if you look, if even Dan Marino, if Dan Marino, if I put, Dan, hey, what's going on? <laughs> If I put Dan Marino, Ben, and Eli together, Dan Marino's going to outshine them. Oh, God. Any day of the week. Any day of the week. But in the big game, is he going to do it? That's why I'm moving close. In the big game, is he going to outshine him? When all the marbles count, will Dan Marino outshine Ben Roethlisberger? Absolutely. Be real. I'm being real. You got to go to the big game he was in. You got to remember this. When Dan Marino was playing, the big thing in the 80s was defense. Those defenses were cruel. And running and, the ball. And, and also remember, these defenses back in the 80s, those quarterbacks were abused. So yeah, well, look at the offensive linemen. The hard. Had to, no, forget about the offensive line. You seen how they used to throw them on a sack? They used to play body slam them. Oh, yeah, they hurt them. They were uh, allowed to hit you them. Can't do, Ben Roethlisberger never experienced that because you can't do that. But back in the 80s, they used to, you had people like Lawrence. You had the whole Jets defense at that time. Klecko, Marty Lyon. You had all these guys beating on you. <laughs> and you were still a great quarterback. I get it. Come on. That thing, the, like, the saving the quarterback didn't start until Tom Brady got, got the knee hit. <laughs> That's when they started so, saving the quarterback, and that was in 2000-something, man, the early so, 2000s. So up so, until then, you had these other guys playing ball, man, in the 90s. That, that Kurt Warner, dude. Yeah, Kurt Warner just didn't impress me. He impressed me for a year or two, and that was it. But all, but the, just the way oh, he's in the Hall of Fame, man. Listen, even even Hostet, look, remember him for the Giants? Yep. When he when Phil Sims got hurt, got hurt. Hostetler took him to the chip. There you go. Anybody, and he won the chip against the Bills, who went in four years straight, right? And he won not because he he was an average quarterback. Costa was nothing special about him, but he was you know he held it down, but because of the defense. Defense. Again. I get it. But St. Louis didn't win because their defense. They blew it because they scored more points than everybody. It was called the greatest show on turf. And it's because he could flip the ball to Marshall or he can go 50 yards downfield to Isaac Bruce or he could throw a 90-yard bomb to Torrey Holt. But he had players and he could throw that year, ball. Two years. A point. That was it. We're talking about quarterback. You can't be on the top 10 and only play two good years. We're talking about the quarterbacks I named played for 20 years plus. But that's they only one part of it. If you played for 20, 20 years, years at an excellent level for those 20 years. But none of those, he never had a season one compared to, to, to the three or four that Kurt Warner put together. He went to the Super Bowl with L.A. twice, and then he went to the Super Bowl with Arizona. I mean, the man was, he lost, but the stat, and, and in all, every one of the games, he put up ridiculous stats. Like, he would have clearly been the MVP in the losses. He just played. He was a big game quarterback. And when, when, when a team was constructed the right way, I mean, he made Isaac Bruce and Torrey Holt. He made them. Right. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of things that make a lot of other quarterbacks. But the 10 that I mentioned, 
the, those and, quarterbacks made people. There, there is what we're voting on. That is the truth. <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning because, the truth, and you got me. You got me going, bro. Because when you look, when you look at a lot of other quarterbacks, they win because they're good because they had good lines. They're good because they had good running backs, or they they're good because they had great receivers. But the ten that I mentioned, it didn't matter who they had. Good. They could have me and you, and they were going to win a chip and make no, us look good. Uh, you better use those reference. You and I, anybody can win with this team. <laughs> <laughs> they got Rui and Randy, man. <laughs> Double R Boskis. You see what I'm saying? So, I don't know. But back on to Dan Marino. Dan Marino, he's definitely not number one. Uh no. I, I placed him number six. Maybe somebody else will place him top five, but nah, you, you got him. I'm six. I'm six to. I don't even really. There's argument for him not to be in the top ten. You know, there's argument. There's definitely there's no the clear cut ones that I know that are in the top ten, other than Brady are Favre. Um, I think Jim Kelly. Oh, geez, my battery. Well, Jim Kelly's another one. Who, go ahead, Michael Badger. Go ahead. Jim Jim Kelly is one who I I really feel sorry for because he is a great quarterback. He took his team four times to uh, the Super Bowl back to back to back. That is crazy. Like, how many yeah. times can you go? And what's worse is they had a great team. They didn't have he a got blown team. out once. And it's just that the teams that they met, they met the Giants. Great defense. You had to play hard, and they weren't going to let you win if you didn't play hard. You had to play harder than the Giants' defense. They lost so by their, they lost their by offense. Them. Their offense wasn't going to beat you, but the defense was. Yeah, you know, and that's uh, I think he would be in my top twenty. Uh, he just gets shitted on because he just never won a chip. But he'd been there. He'd been to that dance four times and couldn't get yeah. it done in a row. And, and he made players better. He made and remember, players. He lost that one to the Giants because of a kick. Field guy judge said Scott Norwood. Wide right. Wide <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. He missed it. Oh no, he missed it. <laughs> so Oh, shot uh, around the world. But he was he was definitely a top twenty quarterback. Oh, this guy, yes. This guy could play. But with that said. I mean, I don't know if you want to chime in. Anything else? I'm good. I, I, don't agree know. With the, I don't agree with the uh, statement made by Joe Montana. I think he needs <laughs> to sit back and keep uh, drinking his sweet tea and lemonade. Yeah. But uh, with that said, you know, the, I think they're all good. They're all professionals. Uh, just some, but better than others. Don't you think? Yes. Some are better <laughs> than others, bro. So with that said, thank you for for watching and don't forget to share us. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like. And we'll see you on our next session. Thanks. Let's go Phillies. Woo!